Sure, I think that's the most important thing. When you start, you have to plan. You have to do a SWOT analysis of yourself. So I got a lot of clarity on how to approach the questions, how to read between the lines. For example, sometimes we miss the markers, identity identity markers like uh, therefore or this is the conclusion, this is the part of the conclusion, this is the premise that we are talking about. Um, but uh, and I w- won't lie, this happened to me as well. But uh, you need to just keep uh, going. That's it. That there's no other choice. Basically, I I I can put in uh, words like you need to persevere. You need to be dedicated for it. Mm-hmm. I used to put in, and it was mostly about uh, my goals rather than the number of hours I used to put in. For example, I didn't used to burden myself with that. I have to. Uh, read uh, fix this amount of time that i have to study so uh, so you reverse engineer basically the solutions help to reverse engineer mm-hmm. the uh, uh, the whole process like how can i again see the question and get to the same uh, answer So hey Aryan, uh, welcome to this debriefing session and congratulations on a, on a six ninety five thing. Really, really balanced score with uh, what eighty five in quant, eighty four and eighty four in DI. So I think a ninety eight percentile in DI, a ninety first percentile in verbal, and in about ninety first percentile in, in quant or eighty nine percentile in quant as well. So first of all, how does it feel having done this in about twenty days? It feels quite overwhelming to be honest because I never expected such a score. You know. the scores come automatically as soon as you play, press the result and uh, when you see a 695 score you like oh did, did it just happen so that was the reaction basically i f- i feel nice about it okay so let's get kind of start with the gmat journey when did you start sure. preparing for it um um and, and so tell me a bit more about the background as to sure i started preparing it just about 23rd of july i enrolled into the egmat platform and that's when because at this initial starting i was a lot of con- i i was quite confused about how to prepare it how to go about it because i didn't have a prior background about preparing the gmat journey so i just i thought the best decision would be to enroll into a into a course that can guide me through it and that's why i got into the egmat platform and i think it had um, it had a lo- it had a very comprehensive uh, course uh, basically it was divided into the quantitative section in the uh, data a- analysis section and in the verbal reasoning section and it was and it had every topic uh, covered with the concepts and then there were the practice questions and there was the cementing quizzes also so i think it was quite uh, it helped i i practiced a lot throughout the 2025 journey, days journey and i think that is what uh, helped me the most Okay, so let's kind of get started with this. So, when you started with preparation, what kind of was your feeling with regards to what's your strength, what's uh, your area that you needed work in? Sure, I think that's the most important thing. When you start, you have to plan. You have to do a SWOT analysis of yourself. You have to do what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. So, I quickly le- realized, okay, so like the quantitative section was will be my strength. Mm-hmm. So, I need not work a lot upon that, and uh, the data. An- Uh, analytic section or data insight section could be a strength for me i didn't explore that fully and i knew that the verbal would be a challenge for me so i was clear upon these things and i i probably in the 2025 days i hardly gave to be honest one or two days to quantitative section you know i just practiced it i did not see any particular concepts to be honest i was invested a lot in the verbal reasoning and the critical reasoning section in the rc section and i was a lot invested in the in practicing the data uh, data section as well so that was my strength weakness analysis got it so verbal is a was something that was a, a potential weakness so how did you go about using the course and what were the key learnings as you used the course Sure. So the first question you asked was, uh, "What were the what were my uh, learnings out of the course?" Right. So uh, how I used my course was basically I approached every section um, uh, as a unit. So mm-hmm. starting with the critical reasoning section, I I um, saw uh, each uh, topic as each subtopic separately. For example, assumption I used to do on one day, mm-hmm. and then evaluate questions. 
or uh, or the different kind of questions like strength and weakness questions i all i used to devote my certain time for first assessing and first understanding the concept that how if a question comes how should i first use the uh, first i should decipher the conclusion the premise and then probably i should eliminate the options out of the uh, i should eliminate three of the options then i would be left with two of the options and then i have to probably brainstorm and i have to invest more of my mind to get to the final answer mm-hmm. so these are the some of the tricks you know i learned and i imbibed it ki i have to do that if a question comes mm-hmm. and uh, then it was all practice i think at this uh, the it was most of the practice i attended one of your sessions mm-hmm. that you took on uh, critical reasoning i think i you gave five or six questions and then you yep. used to do a poll about it and and i was involved in one of those polls okay um, so i think uh, it helped me quite a lot so as you went through the course how did it build your thought process or even through practice so how did you see your you know ability evolve i think one of the words that comes to my mind is uh, clarity so i got a lot of clarity on how to approach the questions how to read between the lines for example sometimes we miss the markers identity identity markers like uh, therefore or this is the conclusion this is the part of the conclusion this is the premise that we are talking about so we are able to break down the passage into different subsections you know, so that we are able to an- analyze it better so i think that is what i gained clarity about so when you do that when you do break the passage down how does that help you i think i think that's about it basically when you break down the passage that's when you understand like okay in the first if you are t- talking about the rc right so there are two three passages so you have to understand right from the first line i think that's the most important that what the passage wants to say about mm-hmm. and then then we need to go down and then we need to see like uh, if there's a in the second passage there's a however or there's a critical uh, there's a counter premise that the Uh, author wants to highlight so we need to understand the key things and probably just skip on the details because the details can be handled later mm-hmm. so you have to develop that knack and that knack comes from practice i believe so i think practice is something that you need to invest your time on yeah so you are someone who's prepared for upsc for a couple of years right, right. <laughs> and and which means you've read a lot yeah and 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 now you were preparing for rc and you're just approaching a very i mean approaching it in a way probably differently than the totally you. different yeah so so do you think the way you're approaching rc now if you were to go back to your upsc books you'd be able to get more out of the same reading material uh, no i think the, both the things are totally different so i think uh, th- they involved a totally a different skill set and probably somewhat yeah it can help somewhat because uh, when you're reading a passage it g- gives you a uh, a critical analysis skill for example so you're uh, making the, an argument in all of those right yeah 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 and this yeah, is the so, same thing that's happening in gmat yeah so passages. right right so whenever you're reading a passage you develop that knack probably so mm-hmm. if i'll get back so probably i'll be able to Uh, i'll i'll have that knack now and i'll be able to comprehend the passage better so i think yeah it can help <laughs> okay um now how many hours did you put in every day during the- uh, right so i had i had positive of time right so um so i used to devote probably 2 3 hours in the morning and 2 3 hours uh, before bedtime so that makes about 5 to 6 hours a day Mm-hmm. i used to put in and it was mostly about uh, my goals rather than the number of hours i used to put in for example i didn't used to burden myself with that i have to uh, read uh, fix this amount of time that i have to study it was more about i have to complete this goal today i have to complete the strengthen and weaken weakening section mm-hmm. with the practice questions mm-hmm. so this this would be my goal for example in the last 5 uh, to 6 days i i practiced the mba official mock test so that was uh, that was what i did i used to practice them and i used to analyze what were my mistakes how can i do it better mm-hmm. so, so i think you need to be more aligned with your goals rather than um, fixing the time schedule or fixing the time that you you have to have an objective for every study session. right then right study till you fulfill that objective right. and then and then you go about doing that yeah, so right. um on the egmat platform when i looked at your practice sessions and i did look at them initially your accuracy was low and then it mm-hmm. gradually went up so okay. um 
Again, do you remember this? So I, I think I remember. I think I remember it that uh, towards the end, it was like I was scoring good on the medium level sections mm-hmm. and the easy level sections. I was scoring good, but initially I was like, "Oh man, what am I doing here?" <laughs> yeah. So, so, so when your that. accuracy was low initially, how did you yeah. keep your spirits up? I mean, what was that belief that kept you going? I think that's a brilliant question because because mostly uh, when your scores are low, you just you just feel so low that i don't want to uh, pursue this further i think i'm not made for this um, but uh, and i w- won't lie this happened to me as well but uh, you need to just keep uh, going that's it that there's no other choice basically i i, I can put in uh, words like you need to persevere you need to be dedicated for it but i think just you need to be fixed for your that i have to achieve this if i have to achieve this I, if i have to achieve this gmat score i have to work towards it i have to increase on my weaknesses mm-hmm. there's no other way there's no other uh, you have to ad- identify your uh, weaknesses you have to build upon them you have to build upon your uh, uh, accuracy or whatever so you have to keep your goal in mind and then keep improving i think that's what that's what works for me so let's go towards data insights you have a 98% talent data insights yeah right um when you started the data insights section how did that feel when you started learning that is not when you got the- yeah yeah i think when i started learning the data insights section the first there were a couple of feelings and the feelings changed with every day right so the first time i started it because i had a strong background on the quant section i was like okay i can crack this then on the second day when i gave a mock test then i decided okay i can't do this i have to take some uh, classes for it i have to get my concepts right and then only i should uh, go on to attempt this so i start i took the data sufficiency concept classes i then uh, took the different uh, you know uh, uh, the, the GIP, uh, multi- yeah. msr 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 was quite a challenge for me so i practiced it a lot and i i i got i think all of them right in the final exam there were three uh, i think there were two msr sections for me okay. so so i got uh, those right in my final exam so i think msr was a section because i used to invest 15 to 20 min- in the initial stages i used to uh, invest a lot of time in the msr and um, gradually i just realized that i have to write and break it down into smaller pieces because i i for initially used to think okay i'll remember all the information of the three tabs and then i'll go on to attempt the question but later i realized that it was more it was a more prudent st- strategy if i if i just wrote what's in the first tab right there and then proceed to the next tab and then go on with the questions so these are some of the strategies so when I you think. wrote information down which is kind of what we call as owning the data set right and uh, then did the time to answer questions did it go down yeah overall it went down probably in the first question because you're analyzing the data set it goes up but uh, over the course of three sections when you take the average that will go down got it over the three tabs it will go down tr- tremendously right okay, okay. all right um what about gi and ta or tpa how did you feel about those about the data from which yeah, section bi section the graphs question or the oh, oh, question oh okay i think uh, i think uh, over the tpa section i would say ki uh, it's the, it's also divided into various parts right for example you have a verb and math maths related uh, questions then you have a non maths related yes. section right yes. so in the maths related section i kind of used to gra- grasp what's being asked but in the non math related section i knew that if i read the verbal reasoning correctly i could get a hold of this so i i focused on my verbal section for that and uh, and then i practiced upon the tpa uh, questions that were provided by the eg maths platform and you know the uh, the cementing quizzes and the concept quizzes that you can build up build on your own so i mostly chose msr and tpa and these were my because these were my weak suits so yeah. i used to choose them Uh, as my concept quizzes and then go for it so got it um how did you use the solutions that were there on in scholarium oh yeah so in um, the solutions right they provide you uh, with the uh, layout of how you can think upon this upon those uh, statements for example how it's being eliminated how what is the line of thinking that is being employed to eliminate that uh, particular option mm-hmm. what is the line of thinking that the probably the author is thinking that i am not able to grasp at this moment 
so uh, so you reverse engineer basically the solutions help to reverse engineer mm-hmm. the uh, uh, the whole process like how can i again see the question and get to the same uh, answer that 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 is the correct answer you know mm-hmm. how can i reverse engineer my mind uh, you know so that is what i think the solutions are mostly for to realize what mistakes you have made and to co- re- to correct your uh, you know the thinking process that you are doing got it right so if you were to really just say okay you know you let's say you took a 10 question quiz sure. hypothetical scenario you got six correct four wrong how much time would you spend on analyzing those four questions i think uh, to be really honest uh, if if i were completely into an, uh, analyzing those questions i would analyze all the 10 questions i would not just analyze those four Got questions it. so probably out of the six questions i know ki like this one question it was just by fluke i by got fluke. it right okay. it was not something i invested my time on it was just something you know i wanted to complete those 10 questions on time so i just uh, so there are questions on which you were 100% confident there were those right on which you weren't 100% confident all uh, right and there are those who got wrong so right so putting them into buckets and then preparing probably an excel sheet but i didn't have a lot of time you know to prepare an excel sheet and to uh, you know, uh, know uh, consider my accuracy and all so i just uh, you know in the four questions i used to see okay this section is what i am weak at probably i am getting the msr question wrong or i am getting the tpa question wrong so i just used to see okay what's the line of thinking that has to be employed or can i go back to the to doing more concept quizzes with just those two questions those two set of questions set of right questions. right i think that was the best part of egmat because you can select the uh, part that you are most weak at and then just keep on practicing upon it the concept the concept quizzes part i think that's true yes you can do that okay you took how many official marks uh from the mba website um, mba site com yeah i think uh, i bought the five uh, the four uh, marks plus two okay four marks plus two and i also gave the third and fourth again so they uh, give a different obviously a different question set so so what so were think, your scores in those marks i think in one of the mocks i scored 715 also so that was okay. uh, 760 but uh, having said that i scored lower in my first two mocks uh, i don't remember the exact score but it was uh, not as per my expectations because i realized that leaving a question was disastrous in gmat so yeah. i didn't i didn't know that beforehand but uh, i probably i used to leave two three questions of verbal at the end because of paucity of time and i realized that dramatically reduced my score so as soon as i grasped this concept Uh, i just uh, then from my subsequent mocks i used to score decently about in the last two two three mocks i scored about 665 655 uh, and in the third last mock i scored about uh, 715 so these were my about my scores that okay. i scored okay so that's that's pretty good so so that's really good to know now you had your mba.com account open right yeah right now it is open yes can i take a look at the two msrs that you got i want to see the di section Oh, okay. If, but actually, you are on your phone, so we probably can't see it on. You can't yeah, see your yeah. screen. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, I said it'll be great if you can send me screenshots of that. I'd be, <laughs> I would love to see that. Um, yeah. So I think this is kind of all that I had, uh, Aryan. So um, you know, uh, once again, congratulations on on. Thank you so much. Six ninety five. It's incredible, and, and I think so. given the fact that you will have the score for five years, you will. Yeah. It, it probably is good for any school that you want to get into. So, so are you looking at Indian or or European or US schools? Uh, mostly for abroad schools only. So European, mostly European, but focused on Ivy Leagues also. Basically, the uh, US schools also. Maybe yeah. US schools as well. Okay. Well, good luck, and uh, and yeah, you know, stay connected. And and uh, if whenever you get into the application side of things, do let me know. I can recommend a few consultants. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.